right then sports fans, so, because I'm not on site, I'm not feeling the best, I'm just in the office now, uh, doing a few bits. We repaired this boiler, well, attempt to repair it, uh, at some point last week, we ended up putting a new boiler in. This boiler that we looked at needed parts put in it, so it needed a new divert motor. I'll pop that over there now so you can get that on my fingers. So we're going to keep that like so. So new divert motor there. We also put a new diverter cartridge in. We put a new sump in on this as well because the sump was split and cracked. Uh, yeah, so we put a new sump on this as well. We also put a new floor turbine with a sensor as well. But what happened is when we did this turbine, bit of a nightmare, this elbow here ended up snapping. The turbine snapped inside, which is an absolute pig of a job uh, to do. So it was a little bit gutting that, I'll be honest with you. Uh, we had to end up changing this as well. But the boiler predominantly at first, the issue with it was there was no hot water. So we looked at what was what we knew, knew the diabetic valve was faulty and the plate needed cleaning. We changed the floor turbine as well, just obviously as precaution, like I said, you know, they're not majorly expensive parts. When we changed these parts, including the sum as we picked up on the service, it couldn't be fault code. I think it was L3 or F3. Speaking to technical, we put a couple of actions to our for Mr. CB, should I say. But they said basically, age of the boiler and everything else. Once you start getting to that remit of things, uh, stay away from it and just look at basically new boiler, which is a bit of a shame. But obviously, we give the option at the beginning to the client to either put new boiler in or go for the repair costed accordingly. He went for the repair first, so we said anything from there is obviously out of our control, which unfortunately it was. So that's hence why we ended up doing that. So these little gadgets that I bought from our local suppliers, Express, uh, I think it was only 20 quid, really good. I've been very impressed with them. Because changing them down there is an absolute nightmare. You can get your glands on them, done them, but they've come with some nifty little idea. So what you do there, that goes to there. And that goes onto your floor turbine like that. So if I get, just see if I can do up these cheeky little nippexes there. I mean, you can even suck it till I'm open. That's lovely. Right, there The repair was a nightmare, like I said, changing the body, I had to set the pump manifold and everything out was a bit of a nightmare, but was what it was, so we just did it. So, floor turbine. First part I'm going to speak about this little fella here. Ooh, I don't know I'm on so, the way that that works is it sits inside there. When the cold water in that comes in to the boiler, it sends that one in and obviously it forces water directly into a plate heat exchanger, which will come across the plate, come across the top here because the heat is at the bottom, go into the plate, come across, then come out, come out hot. The flow turbine works that when that water runs through that, it goes through this, obviously coming through, and it spins a little turbine inside. Once that turbo spins, it creates a little ma magnetic field, electromagnetic field, whatever you want to say. This sensor picks it up. Now on these ideals especially, you're looking for a solid red light. If you're getting an intermittent light where it's flashing potentially every now and again, uh, there's an issue with our the turbine on the sensor, but we replace both on this instance. Uh, then that just stays back to the board and then the boiler, once it sends that, it's realised it's in hot water. The diverter valve will move it over, which is down here, into the hot water, private mode. Uh, and obviously it'll just force water on your heat exchanger, the plate heat exchanger, so, so that's obviously predominantly how the hot water side works. Now the diverter valve pin, there, I'm going to give this one a little one on that as well, because these parts, like I say, they've been put in, we got the boiler fired once and it went, kept going to lock out. There we go, Oops. a little tool that. And that's all your diver is there, so there's a pin in there, and that just literally allows the water to go around separate ways, so if I'm right, once that's forced in like that, your plunge is pushed in and it'll just push like that and allow the water just to dive out round down the plate heat exchanger or go straight down the heating system. Now, on combi boilers, your most common factors, if you've got uh, lukewarm hot water, a couple of little things to check. One, as you could say check your floor turbine, but if your floor turbine is not picking up that there's no flow through the boiler, you generally won't get no water. Your boiler's been in standby mode. It won't pick up like trying to read it like for that side of things. First protocol, I would be going to straight away, is checking your plate heat exchanger. Now you could frame the image camera, check that, just obviously see what the plate's going. Telltale sign if your plate heat exchanger is blocked up. Is the boiler ramp right up to right up to max rate, then ramp right down, go off, cool down, then come back on. That potentially could be the plates are blocked there. If it's your diverter valve, 
Uh, always feel for the flow on the heating pipe, basically. So your flow coming out the boiler, in hot water mode, if you're getting uh, heated water going down the flow on the radiators, you know, if you get a bath and the bad start getting warm, it's a telltale sign, like I say, that the diverter valve has gone. When the diverter valve goes, that could also be forced to die, basically, come to its end of life with the plate heat exchange being blocked. Because this pump here, this uh, 1560 pump, what happens here is, when your system kicks in and the water comes into demand, basically, this pump going on the heat system is great, it works fine. Once it's been sent on the plate, that has got to work a lot harder. So it's flying it on the plate. So over time, if that plate becomes blocked, it's got to get that floor on somewhere. So it can eventually push on the spring, on the diverter, like I say, uh, and then obviously end up back on the diverter. Another thing to look for on Logix as well is these pins on the service. I've had a few lately where we're going to like my electrics keep tripping. And the reason being is, is they can leak out of there. It's like a little rubbish over the side there. It gets into the milk body there, it keeps popping your electrics. I'm gonna, as well, I'll be honest with you, I'm gonna look at taking the gas valve out. Now I know the gas, well, the gas valve's not needed, but I'm not gonna bother keeping this gas valve because that's the existing gas valve that was installed on the boiler. Uh, that's the existing gas valve on the boiler. But I'm going to see if I can try and get that sump out. We fit a new sump now, and uh, that sump's fine. So I'm more than likely going to look at taking the heat X out here. We'll shut the boiler full down to be fair. I might as well get that fan out as well while I'm here. Do you know what I've got though? I've got a screwdriver sitting there, so I'm cool here. I'm afraid I'm going to whip the fan out now. I'm not going to bother keeping the fan. I know the fan was working, but I don't see the point in keeping it. Like I say, it's uh, second hand, it's the age of the boiler, so I'm not going to keep that. I'll keep things like the I'm not keeping all that, it's pointless. The bits I will keep is the new parts that have been fitted, like I say. Uh, we'll get in for that bare mode. To be fair, I think we're going to set the full heat out as well. Bare points in there. Again, like I said, that room centre there, so I'm just going to give it a lot of time wisely. I said to the lads when they took this boil off, bring it back to the office. I'll strip it all down and we'll keep it for spares because like I said there's a few spares I did. Recharge that expansion as well. It's good though, like I say, training for the lads as well, you know, stripping boilers boil down and stuff as well. Training for the lads is imperative, you know, teaching the lads how we do things, boil breakdowns, stuff like that, you know, it does make a difference. Now, honestly, I know you'll be like using the wrong tools. I'm just getting these loosened off. Now, and once I've got them to a stage where they're kind of where they need to be. It also has a school guard sitting around and my ratchet set, so I'm kind of just uh, winging it. It's been, it's been really lazy, that one, so it's been really lazy. On your bed plate, especially when looking at service on these as well, what you are looking at doing is Make sure there's no cracks or any deformities in the burner plate there. And that one looks all right. I know this boiler's dead now, we've got rid of it, but that to fair is intact, it's still good. What I have had before these boilers as well, sometimes you can get a bit of a humming noise, just so you know. Nine times the tensile gas valve, then is gone. But I've also had it where these plates inside come loose and when it kicks in they vibrate, so just full to fault that one. Now this one's not the best in there, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I'm gonna take you inside the boiler now. That's not the best inside there. You're gonna see there. It's not too bad, but it could be a lot better. Now, going with the manufacturer's instructions, MIs overall everything. If we get good readings on the flow gas analysis, that's what we're looking for predominantly, and a clean up of the oil just to make sure it's all nice and tidy inside, like I said. So, go with manufacturer's instructions, and you can't go wrong, really. So gas valve up now, don't need the gas valve, I'm not going to bother using that. Connor needs this potentially tonight, he's got a boiler breakdown to go to do. So you've got a L2 fault code on an idea logic for a relation of this. L2 comes up with his ignition problem, so that's what I'm going to give him to change tonight. Nine times out of ten, your ignition box, which creates a spark inside to do it like say and go from there. So Connor can have that one. What I'm going to do now is get that sun pop because the sun I'm going to keep that, and the reason be beyond that is, I've just installed that recently, it's not pointless throwing it away. 
do that, I'm going to have to take the full XL. Now, usually when you're changing them, I'll just snap the little lugs on it and move it off. But on this instance, I'm going to get the full weld on, to be fair. Disconnected there. If I do these screws. So that's full heat engine. Took the full heat engine out now, which is great. And then the sump, what I've recently changed, you can see there, is I'm just going to free that off now. I'm trying not to snap these lugs because if I don't then this is knackered. Because I've put plenty of grease on that as well. Is, uh, it should come off quite easy. I'm saying that, it's just pulling a little bit. Over. There we go. So, a sump again, I'll clean that and we'll keep that lot coming up for the That's a heat engine, not really a lot to it, you can see inside there. The way it works, it's got our ignition electrode, ionisation detection, then our heat transfer plate so that it comes up the bottom to your sump there. That doesn't look too awful, does it? I mean, that could have potentially been a split. I've had a few of these where they end up getting hairline cracked, but anyways, part of the buy. And then we're just down to our pump. Yeah, I'm going to strip that out, that's a return manifold. That was an absolute bugger to do, but I'm going to take that out. But again, you can see pretty much wreck down these boilers there. Not bad little boilers to work on, plates like I say. The only issue I'm finding with these boilers at the moment is the first one I've got apparently it's quite common now, is them there. So it's about it hustles, that's what the other video I'm gonna do today. I've done a bit this morning, but I'm just uh been under the weather, so doing what I can keep up with the content again. Respect and support, I'm gonna speak to you real soon guys.